Welcome back to Chemistry 1510 video notes. Let's talk about thermochemistry in chapter 6. Let's start with our definition of energy today. And when we're talking about energy, we're going to define this as the potential or the capacity to move matter. This is going to be a property of matter, and energy exists in different forms that can be interconverted. Now, as we talk about the different forms, remember from your kind of general background knowledge that there's kinetic energy, there's potential energy, and then in chemistry, we're also going to use internal energy. And so sometimes it's hard to relate what uh, kinetic energy and what potential energy might be um, when we're talking about chemistry, and we're going to do that in class. So let's talk about the law of conservation of energy, which you've probably heard before. The law says that energy can be converted from one form to another, but the total amount of energy remains constant. So during the course of a chemical reaction, we usually talk about the heat of a chemical reaction, and this is the energy that is um, either released or absorbed during the course of a chemical reaction. So we'll say that this is heat energy, that is lost or gained during a chemical reaction. Oh, I abbreviated uh, reaction as Rxn in that definition. So what happens is heat is transferred between objects which causes a change in temperature. So it's important to remember that heat and temperature are not the same thing. It's really easy to mix them up because they're so related to one another. Right? If we see an increase in temperature, that means we also have an increase in heat. So when we start talking about the heat of reaction, we have to um, kind of define uh, where our reaction is happening and what is surrounding the reaction. So let's think about this in something that's pretty tangible. Let's think about a coffee cup. So you have a coffee cup. You just went to Starbucks and your coffee is hot, right? So you have this kind of the steam coming off of that. So when we talk about drawing boundaries, we're going to classify um, our chemical reactions and this future coffee cup in terms of the system and the surroundings. So if we consider our coffee cup, the system is going to be the substance or maybe the mixture that we're singling out. And we could include the vessel or the container that the substance is in. So maybe in this case, we would uh, single out the coffee and then maybe we would include the styrofoam cup too.
then the surroundings is everything in the vicinity of the system, right? It's technically, this is going to get wild, it's everything else in the universe, which is just so crazy. So we try to um, measure the system because measuring everything else in the universe is just uh, kind of preposterous. So we also try to limit the surroundings to everything that's close by, so in the vicinity. of the system. So let's take a moment and maybe we can single out the coffee in the coffee cup. So this would be part of our uh, system. In certain cases, we might also include the cup itself as part of the system. And then the surroundings would be everything around it, right? So everything I'm highlighting in blue would be around it. And so you can start to see by that picture that it's a lot easier to measure, uh, take measurements of the temperature of the system than it is to take measurements of the surroundings. So over time, the coffee cools. And what happens when it cools is energy transfers to the surroundings and the uh, heat transfer gets to a point of equilibrium. So we see that the coffee and the room temperature become the same temperature. So the energy transfers to the surroundings. And it eventually comes to an equilibrium. So let's talk real quick about the difference between temperature and heat. Temperature is a measure of kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is the energy of movement, right? So temperature is describing how quickly the molecules are moving. Whereas heat is a type of thermal energy that flows in and out of a system due to a difference of temperature. Now, when you think about this, the idea of flowing in and out of a system due to a difference in temperature, that's the process that we were talking about here of what happens to the coffee, right? It cools because there's a difference in temperature between the coffee and the surroundings, and so they're not yet at equilibrium. And so what ends up occurring is we have the heat, a thermal energy flowing out of the coffee system into the surroundings until an equilibrium is reached. Let's talk about one more thing related to uh, Q. When we start looking at heat, we're going to represent heat with the letter Q. If a reaction gives off heat, that reaction is called exothermic. If a reaction absorbs heat, this is called endothermic. So when we use these words exo and endothermic, we're going to find that Q is going to have a numerical value associated with these. If the heat is being uh, released or given off, then we're going to say that that Q is negative. If something is absorbing heat, then that Q is positive. So this positive and negative notation, you can think of it as when a reaction absorbs heat, then energy is added.
And when a reaction releases heat, then energy is subtracted. This part can get really confusing. And so um, in class, I'll show you a, a figure that will help illustrate the flow of energy because um, as one thing gains energy, something else is going to uh, have given up that energy. So you have to have one, they have to work in tandem together. So one final thing before we uh, end this video is when we're talking about energy, we're also going to use this term enthalpy. Enthalpy is, uh, the abbreviation for that is a, a capital H. And this is just the energy of a system that is open to the atmosphere at constant pressure. So when we're talking about chemical reactions, a lot of times we'll talk about H, right? Uh, instead of Q. And so a lot of times it gets really confusing because people will be like, oh my gosh, aren't H and Q the same thing? And it certainly feels that way because when we talk about chemical reactions, your chemical reactions are going to be open to the atmosphere most of the time. And so we can use this equation here where the change in enthalpy, which is very similar to energy, is going to be the final uh, enthalpy minus the initial enthalpy. And for a chemical reaction, that's going to be the final thing is always your products and the initial thing is always your reactants. And of course, enthalpy changes can be exothermic or endothermic. And what we'll do is we'll pause here and we'll pick up in a different video with a little bit more information on this. So as always, thank you for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.